Hello, my name is Lori Matsky, and I am a Division Manager in the Student Support and Innovation Division within the North Dakota Department of Public Instruction. Our presentation today focuses on the federal requirements pertaining to adequate yearly progress and the identification process for program improvement. This presentation is part of a series of trainings developed for school board members. The School Board Professional Development Training Series is a collaborative initiative between the North Dakota Regional Education Association, the North Dakota School Board Association, and the North Dakota Department of Public Instruction. So what is the Elementary and Secondary Education Act, otherwise referred to as ESEA? It is a federal education law enacted on April 11, 1965, signed by President Lyndon B. Johnson. ESEA is the first federal law mandating federal funds to primary and secondary education. The goal was and continues to be to improve educational opportunities for disadvantaged children. Examples of disadvantaged children include children living in poverty, homeless youth, and children with limited English proficiency, just to name a few. Every five to seven years, all of the federal programs included in the ESEA are reauthorized. This provides Congress and others an opportunity to make changes to the federal programs. The next slide demonstrates the various reauthorizations that have occurred since the law was first enacted. At the bottom of the slide, you'll, we see the enactment of the ESEA Act in 1965. Then came the Nation at Risk in 1986, the Goals 2000 Educate America Act of 1990, Improving America's Schools Act of 1994, and then finally where we're at now with No Child Left Behind, which was enacted in 2001. NCLB should have been reauthorized in approximately 2007-2008, but the reauthorization process has been stalled in Congress for many years. On January 8, 2002, the NCLB Act was officially enacted by President George W. Bush. NCLB brought a whole new focus on accountability. It is a federal law requiring a single statewide accountability system for all districts and public schools. The prior law mainly pertained to Title I schools, whereas most of the requirements outlined in ES in No Child Left Behind apply to all schools and districts. On the next slide, you'll see a proficiency timeline. When NCLB was first enacted, it required states to define what they what is adequate yearly progress so that in 12 years all students will achieve the state defined proficiency level north dakota opted to go up in three year increments some states went up each year annually but the bottom line was that all states at the end of the 12 years had to be at 100 percent proficiency now, many believed, even back then, that that was an unrealistic goal. However, most believe that the law would be reauthorized before the 12-year timeline ever came about. But as previously said, the reauthorization has been stalled now for a number of years. NCLB has several reporting requirements. One key element of the law is called the AYP report. NCLB requires states to measure the progress of all students and subgroups of students every year. The state produces a report called the AYP report. Districts and schools must communicate the results of these measures to parents and the community and share a copy of this AYP report. AYP is based on reading, language arts, and mathematics achievement. All public schools and districts are held accountable for the achievement of the students as a whole 
as well as in four defined subgroups. Those include economically disadvantaged students, basically those are students on free and reduced lunch, limited English proficiency students, students with disabilities on an IEP, and then by major ethnic or racial groups. Improvement of graduation rates for high schools and attendance for elementary and junior high or middle schools is also considered. In addition, there is a requirement for at least 95% of the students at the state, district, school, and subgroup level to have participated in the state assessment. So the AYP report is a simple one-page document that tells schools and districts how students performed in reading and math on the state assessment. It's identified as a whole and in the four specific subgroups. In the spring of 2015, the USDE announced an AYP freeze waiver for any state that was administering a new state assessment during the 2014-15 school year. This waiver allowed states to not assign schools new ratings based on those assessments and to waive the program improvement determination. Bottom line, the AYP consequences and program improvement timeline were frozen for the 15-16 school year. North Dakota applied for and received an AYP freeze waiver. Under this waiver, the Department of Public Instruction would still generate an AYP report for every school and district. However, DPI did not report the achievement data on the AYP report for reading and math. Instead, the AYP report only indicates if the school or district made AYP based on three indicators, whether 95% of the students participated in the state assessment, the graduation rate at the high school, and attendance rate at elementary and middle school. On September 28, 2015, DPI released the official AYP reports for all public schools and districts in North Dakota based on the spring 2015 state assessment. Based on the results of the data, most schools and districts in North Dakota made AYP. However, schools and districts must make AYP for two consecutive years before they are removed from program improvement status. Therefore, most schools and districts that were previously identified for improvement are in a holding pattern and remain in program improvement for this 15-16 school year. Program improvement is another key requirement in NCLB. Each state must identify for improvement any Title I school or district that fails to make AYP for two consecutive years. This identification must take place before the beginning of the school year. There were program improvement requirements in the prior bills as well. However, NCLB made several changes to the process. In the prior bills, the focus was mainly on a few low-performing schools. In NCLB, at the beginning of the 12-year timeline, most schools and districts in North Dakota were making AYP. However, as we started to go up in the 12-year timeline, it became more and more difficult for some schools to make adequate yearly progress. Our state has now been at 100% proficiency required for three years. Therefore, we do have many schools and districts identified for program improvement in North Dakota. The next slide, titled Consequence Timeline, outlines what happens when a school or district is identified for program improvement. In the first year of being identified, there are basically three requirements that kick in. Number one, the school or district must develop an improvement plan and basically identify their plans for making adequate yearly progress in the future. 
Number two, the school must offer school choice if there is another school at that grade span within the district. Due to how rural North Dakota is, many of our schools cannot meet this requirement because there is only one elementary or one high school within the district, and so then this rule does not apply. However, in our larger school districts, where there are multiple elementary schools, they would have to offer parents the opportunity to transfer to another school that was making adequate yearly progress. And then the third requirement that kicks in during that first year is that the district must set aside 10% of their Title I funds for professional development aimed at the reasons for not making adequate yearly progress. As schools and districts progress on the timeline, the sanctions get a little bit more stringent. So in year two, all of the same requirements from year one remain the same, and then in addition to that, the school must offer supplemental education services to students on free and reduced lunch. Supplemental services just basically me means tutoring before or after school hours. If a school or district progresses to year three, again, all of the requirements from year one and two remain intact, and then in addition to that, they're in what's called corrective action. And there is a menu of five different options that they can choose from, which include implementing a new curriculum, extending the school day or year like in an after-school program, or maybe if the school or district has new management. Year four is when a school develops a plan for alternative governance. And then finally, year five, when a school enters alternative governance, again, there is a menu of options that schools can choose from, from um, offering school choice across district boundaries, contracting with an outside expert, or some other form of restructuring. No Child Left Behind only went five years because, as mentioned previously, it was supposed to have been reauthorized after those five years. Since it has been stalled for over 10 years, we have many schools and districts that have just been stuck in that year five of improvement for several years now. Exiting school improvement. If a school identified or district identified for improvement makes AYP for two consecutive years, the school or district is no longer subject to improvement. This presents a unique opportunity for schools and districts in North Dakota for this 15-16 school year, because as previously mentioned, most schools and districts made AYP on the 2014-15 AYP report. So there is the potential for many schools and districts to be removed from improvement in the spring of 2015 if they are able to make adequate yearly progress. As a school board member, what should you be aware of regarding program improvement? Outlined there are three things that may be of interest. Have you seen the AYP report for your school or district? Are any of your schools or districts identified for program improvement? What resources or supports can the board provide? Questions that you may want to ask your superintendent or principal are outlined there. If your school or district is an improvement, what category are you in? Do any of your students participate in supplemental educational services? If eligible, did your school apply for additional program improvement funding that is available for schools identified for improvement? And in, if applicable, what corrective action or alternative governance is your school or district implementing? So those are just some suggested questions that you could talk to your administrators about. As far as what's next on the horizon, there is still the potential for a reauthorization to occur in the winter of 2015-16. The reauthorization was looking very promising this past summer. However, then a number of events took place, including the Speaker of the House, John Boehmer, resigning, 
Secretary of Education, Arne Duncan, resigning. And so many believe that those are all signs that we are probably not going to see a reauthorization during the Obama presidency. Another key event that will happen this school year is that North Dakota students will participate in the Smarter Balanced State Assessment for the second time. And we anticipate that the few problems that we had last spring have now been worked out. So we are anticipating a much smoother state assessment. Kids are more familiar with the process now, and we believe that our North Dakota students will do well on the state assessment in the spring of 2016. Superintendent Baszler has created a state assessment task force to study the issue of state of assessment. The key two things that we're talking about are, number one, the fact that are we testing too much? Do schools need to kind of cut back on the number of assessments that they're giving? And then do we want to remain with Smarter Balance or do we want to put out an RFP and look for another vendor? So these are all topics of discussion at the task force meeting. Anyone who has questions on any of the information presented in this recorded training can contact me by phone or email. My contact information is listed on the final slide there. Thank you for participating in this training.